there's something that we've been discussing behind the scenes for the last few months, myself, you and Rob Key, about the change of technique we've seen predominantly in domestic cricket, first-class cricket, not so much in test match cricket. And I've just been looking the last two games how a lot of batsmen are starting on off stump. In our era, me, you and Mark Butcher would be on leg stump, middle and leg. Nowadays, a lot of batsmen start on off stump. And it's been very noticeable in the last couple of games we've done how many LBWs there have been. I'm going to show you a table of LBWs so far this season. We did Middlesex a couple of weeks ago. They're second in the leading LBWs from the season. We did Glamorgan last week and they are top of the LBW stats. Now, is that just those two sides or is it a trend that's going in that direction with the change in techniques? If I show you the trend over the years, over the decades, have a look how the LBW percentage is going up. And in fact, in 2021, the cricket we've seen this year, it is the highest amount. Now, that could be because of DRS, even though we don't use DRS in county cricket, umpires are more willing to give it off seamers and spinners. Or is it because batsmen are starting on off stump and are susceptible to the ball coming back in? And I want to just discuss with the pair of you, why are they doing this? Because surely it makes LBW a much more dangerous decision. I'm going to show you some dismissals from the two games that we've done. This is Sam Robson. Look where he starts. Anything that nips back in is going to be close and umpires are going to give it. They're doing it, I think, to cover the outside edge. Ollie Pope on interview said to you, we want to cover one side of our edge. But even Marnus Labuschagne at Glamorgan is getting done by the inside edge with the ball that nips back in. The amount of LBWs, batsmen trying to get outside the line, straight balls become very dangerous balls and the bat has to come across at an angle. So I'm going to just show you the split screen between an old era and now. So look at Michael Atherton on the right. You can see middle and off. You can even see leg stump. You compare that to Robson, you can't see any of his stumps. He gets in behind the ball. Michael Atherton plays beside the ball. I know it's a little friendly half folly from Mark Elam, but the change in technique there has been absolutely noticeable. The other thing is, if you do get in right behind the ball with your head going to the offside, surely your bat then has to come across the line. And if I can just show you Sam Robson the other day, obviously playing in this game, you can see his bat come across the line of the ball because his head goes across, he's outside the line. Now watch the bat and, and it comes across the line of the ball and basically a straight ball, he's playing towards mid-wicket almost. And I just want you to, I know Butch is quite strong on this, I want to explain to me why they're doing this and surely it is leading to more LBWs. Should they change to being a bit more middle and leg and playing beside the ball? Yeah, it's a... It's a very good point that you make. I reckon it's crept into the English county game in the last six or seven years. I can remember talking to Joe Denley when he was at Middlesex, and I reckon that was about seven years ago, and he was the first one that I saw really bat on off stump. And I remember asking him, why are you doing that? Just because it was quite unusual. And he said because he wanted to know where his off stump was and anything outside his eye line, i.e. outside the line of his head, he would leave the ball. So that, I think, is why most people try and do it. Two things I would say in response to that. I've seen a lot of batsmen this summer and in the last few summers get out nicking the ball on fifth and sixth stump anyway. They're still playing at balls outside their eye line. Secondly, it means that they miss out on scoring through the offside. Many balls that you'd think a batsman, perhaps from years gone by, would think about cutting. They're now defending. So you, you remove the opportunities to score through the offside and anything straight, you are very vulnerable for the reasons that you mention that your body and your legs are in line with the ball and your bat has to come a, across the ball. So for all kinds of reasons, I don't think it's a sensible thing. I understand completely. I am long retired and uh, fashions and fads change. But I just make one comment from a great, great, former England batsman who said you play beside the ball, not behind the ball. Those were the words of Ted Dexter. And I still think, Butch, that those words uh, are true or hang true. Well, I, I must admit, I'm, I was feeling a little bit ill watching all of those LVW decisions. I mean, this, how big did the pads look? 
you know, that all you can see is pad. Um, for for so many reasons, it, it's it's. I, I think it's wrong. I mean, listen, there are lots and lots of different ways of doing, of scoring runs, of making runs, and lots of people have done them in different ways. But I think fundamentally, what you're looking at on the left, I'm going to go go as far as to say it's wrong, right? And I'd be very hesitant to use that word generally. Just just get that split screen back up again for us for one second. Let me just start off with a really fundamental thing. Sam Robson on the left, his head before the ball has even been bowled is outside. The line of off stump. Yours, Mike Atherton, with a with a I am guessing that's a middle stump guard you've got there, middle, middle and leg guard. Your eyes or your sort of outside, your right eye is over the top of off stump before the ball has been bowled. Now, if you start off with the one on the left, if you start with your head already outside of the line of off stump, you don't know where off stump is. Also, with the pads in line with the stumps of Sam Robinson's eye, and he's not even the worst, by the way, because you can just see a sliver of off stump is that the bowler has got all three stumps to aim at, plus he's got another three stumps outside the off stump in order to be a tight line. So, so the bowler's margin for, for line is absolutely enormous. It's huge. And you can run up and bowl the ball at middle and leg, and if the batsman happens to miss one that he thinks he's going to turn down the leg side, you're out LBW. I mean, you can't miss it offside and you can't miss it leg side. It's ridiculous. L let me throw something back at you from a, a current player's perspective. If we go back to that split screen, you'll see the pitch on the left is quite green, quite tinged with green. I'm playing on an absolute shirt front there against four foot one Mark Elam. <laughs> but the, what the current player would say is that the pitches in the last few years have changed fundamentally, that the ball is jagging around off the seam far more uh, than it used to. And that is the reason why they want to get over to off stump. I, I don't agree with it, by the way. I'm just putting a devil's advocate no, no, I agree. Uh, argument from the current player's perspective. Well, all I will say is this. Number one, that there were green, nibbly pitches around in the in the dim and distant past when, when you and I were playing. And number two, there is, it, it doesn't getting out LBW is no better than getting out caught behind. So if they're worried about nicking the nicking the ball because it's nibbling away, you know, you, you, miss a, you miss a straightish delivery and you're out LBW. Which one's better? There is no better way of getting out. All I'm saying is, the, the 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 key to batting is being able to make runs. Now, if you stand with all of your with your pads and everything in line with the stumps and your head outside the line of off stump, you're struggling to score through the offside. Oh. If you miss miss a straight ball or a ball that in our day bowled at where we would be standing down the a leg stump would have been going down the leg side. If you miss it on the inside, you're out at LBW. And you're not scoring any runs through the offside because the bowler can afford to run up and bowl a wide ball that you and I might punch off the back foot or cut. And it still feels like it's tight to them. You're not going anywhere and scoring any runs either. So, I mean, look, I don't know who's coaching this. I've seen it. I've seen it in, in the women's game where the, the England women all stand on off stump. I don't understand. For me, it is making batting even more difficult than it would be normally. And I, and I don't get it. Let's bring in a man who scored all his runs through third man Nass. It would have been impossible to hit the ball through third man standing on off stump, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'd have found a way, don't worry. There's still an outside outside edge of the bat to play with. Ed. I'm just going to throw another thing into the mix. Does it matter where you start and where you finish? Because a lot of those guys we're showing there are starting on off stump and not moving. Some of us used to start on leg and middle and leg and have trigger movements across the stumps. So I'm just going to show you a comparison with Alex Stewart. There's a split screen of Alex Stewart just standing. Look how much outside leg stump on the right there Alex Stewart is compared to Sam Robson. He is showing Mackay and Tini all his stumps. But watch Alex Stewart's movements. He has that massive trigger, whereas Robson stays on off stump and misses a straight one. Alec gets on to, what, middle and off. Is there a difference where you start and where you finish. Another one who does it is Steve Smith. Steve Smith starts that much outside leg stump, triggers a cross, manages to keep his left leg out of the way, and opens up all sorts of areas. So is there a what? difference between Stewart's end position and Robson's? Well, the, the one thing I will say to you is forget, forget everything else. Where does Alex Stewart's head end up after he's finished moving? Now, I guarantee you, having looked at, at, looked at that, in super slow motion. Alex Stewart starts off with his head over middle and leg stump. Robson is already head outside off. And as he nicks a ball that would have hit middle stump, his head is about a foot outside off stump. Alex Stewart moves across. Look where his head is in line with. Right over the top of off stump. 
Forget the shot and forget, you know, the, the, the length of delivery, et cetera, et cetera. But Alec, even with all of those movements, his head ends up on the line of off stump. It's not outside, it's on it. Sam Robson's head, he's not even attempting to play an attacking stroke. He doesn't even get himself forward because he can't. But his head is already way outside the line of off stump. And that is the, that's the last thing you want to be doing. Particularly if you think that the ball is going to be moving around, the head being outside the line of off stump is a disaster. Just from a starting point, before you've done anything else. Yes? No? Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm always wary and mindful of three uh, ageing batsmen who didn't, you know, haven't played for, for 20 years, sounding like back in my day. So I'm constantly trying to understand why fads and fashions do change and why players are as they are right now. What struck me about the Stuart movement there, I would say Alec had quite big trigger movements before the ball would bowl, but also batting is about rhythm and flow. And what I would say, watching a lot of cricketers across the county game at the moment, that there are some very weird stances and some very kind of what I would call static batting uh, techniques or batting methods, static and mechanical and flow and rhythm is so important to batting. And the other crucial thing, and I'm sure you'd both agree with this, is that there is no one way to score runs. As NASA made mention of, Steve Smith takes that massive back and across movement. Uh, Rory Burns bats in quite an unusual way. What I would say at the moment, though, is that the very orthodox has become almost the exception rather than the rule. Normally, it's the orthodox that the, that's the rule and the exceptions are there to be commented upon. At the moment, I would say there are a lot of weird techniques and the very orthodox is unusual. I, I, I agree with you 100% on that. And as I said, there, is no, there isn't a, a right or wrong way of doing things, except for the fact that there is a fundamental art of batting, sort of, you know, batting 101, if you like, and that is you don't want your head to be getting outside the line of off stump, particularly not before the ball has even been bowled. And anything that you do in your setup and in your technique that makes that happen as a matter of course is incorrect. Um, you know, and so that's where I stand on it. There is, that is a no-no. You can do anything else, but don't do that. Umpires Graham Lloyd and in Blackwell just uh, having a look because we've had a little bit of juice just fall from the skies. Hopefully we'll get it going before not too long. Just, Nass, you, you do a fair bit of coaching at a school. You coach young boys and young girls. What are the, the kind of first fundamentals that you look at when you're starting to teach somebody who, you know, we're talking about technique at quite a high level there, but what about the first principles of batting for, for young kids? I think the first thing, as you know, Ath, is just hit and bowl and throw and catch hundreds of balls and have fun, so don't get too technical. And then a realisation, you mentioned Steve Smith there, a realisation that there are so many different ways of being successful. And, and I think the fundamentals of coaching, as opposed to technique, because everyone has a unique technique, is if you change something, just be careful because it creates other problems. And this is a classic example of that. They have changed because they're worried about the outside edge and by changing onto off stump, the inside edge and LBW becomes a problem. So I'm completely in agreement with you and Butch. It's not old fogies saying there is one way. There are lots of different ways and you have to, with a kid, young boy or girl, make sure they find their own way of doing things. I think sometimes in England we change the unorthodox and tell them this is the way you've got to do it. And in fact, abroad, you get the unorthodox action. I just want one question to you, Ath, if you don't mind, while we still have this rain delay. You spoke to Marnus Labuschagne before the Glamorgan game. He is one of the great batsmen in world cricket. He is not a domestic player. He is an international player. What did he have to say? Because it looked like he also was getting across onto off stump and getting LBW more than he does in international cricket. Yeah, he was quite interesting because he was talking about how the winter had gone when India's bowlers bowled very straight at him. And as a result, he slightly got a little bit more open chested to open up the leg side. And he found that coming to England, he had to alter that and adjust it. He felt he was too chest on, too square on. So he was trying to get himself in a more sideways position. But he, like many players, said he does try and get over to off stump. I would say the difference is 
that Smith and Labuschagne tend to get over with their back foot uh, across to off stump and, and don't let that front side uh, get in the way. But one thing you touched on very early on, Nas, was the influence of DRS and Hawkeye. We've seen this morning, actually, a session where Graham Lloyd could have given three LBWs and hasn't. All, all you could say, very good decisions. Um, but from what I've seen in the county game this summer, there's a lot of umpires who would have given those. Uh, that, has, that has had an impact on the figures, as you suggest. I mean, would you say more umpires are giving LBWs these days because of the influence of Hawkeye and DRS? I agree completely. And we did a, the impact on DRS, and you've written an excellent piece in the Times about the impact of spin. And when you go back to spinners like Embury and people before that, the low percentage of LBW, and now you look at modern spinners like Ashwin and Jadeja and the, the LBWs they get, so a huge impact there. The only thing I'd say is put yourself in the boots of an umpire. You see a batsman come out and ask for off-stump guard. If you're that umpire and a batsman saying, can I have middle and off, off-stump, my first thought is you better hit the straight one. If you're taking middle and leg guard and you miss the straight one, it might be going down. If you're taking middle and off, you miss a straight one, I'm going to give you out. So it's in the umpire's mind already that this lad is an LBW candidate. And that might lead to some of the poor decisions that we're seeing. Nas, I wonder if, um, if the, the percentages are reflected in the amount of balls caught behind or caught in the slips. I wonder if you've replaced one mode of dismissal for another. Um, I know I'm not expecting you to come up with the answer, but it could just be the batsmen getting over on the off stump are more likely to get out LBW and bold now. And that it's just replaced the amount of times that we used to nick them to second and third slip and walk off. It's, I'm, I'm guessing, I'm betting that there isn't a great deal of change in terms of, um, you know, suddenly there are there are no dismissals or, or the amount of dismissals has come down and they've all piled onto LBW. It's kind of, they've gone from being caught in the slips to caught to uh, to be nailed in front. Can we get somebody on that? <laughs> I, I'll, um, I'll get back to you on that, Butch. I'll do my research. I'll get back to you. Um, I just thought it was interesting. While we had a bit of a rain delay there, the two openers have gone very well here. They haven't got particularly on to off stump. But just I did the Surrey Middlesex, uh, the Middlesex game rather, Gloucester Lords, and it was noticeable. I watched at home the other day the Glamorgan game. It was noticeable. I just thought for 20 minutes, worth a discussion. I think we're almost ready to go. Yes, it is out. The finger goes up from Graham Lloyd and the consequence of one of the chats that we were having at lunchtime about batsmen getting over to off stump and getting in front of the stumps has been costly for Ollie Pope on this occasion. Yeah, you've been talking about it. Look, right across the stumps, head has gone as well, lost the balance, missed, the, read the line. And Anderson right on the money. Well, we talked about opening a little opportunity. And Ollie Pope will go for a duck. Yeah! Is that a tickle? It is. Finger goes up. What a change this has been for Middlesex. Martin Anderson, a second wicket now. Ben Folks follows Ollie Pope back into the pavilion. Both the England men gone for none. Huge smiles on the youngsters' faces, and this is why. Rooted at the crease, just kind of flirted at it, really. Didn't quite get in line. And an easy tickle through to John Simpson. And Anderson has just come in and caused a little bit of carnage here. Another wicket goes. Ben Folks for a duck, 140 for four.